This bulletin is coming to you live from our studios here at Kukumimle in a crown digital address GA0993341. It's broadcasting live on Joy 99.7 FM, also live on Love 99.5 FM in Kumasi, affiliates across the country on ABN Radio in London and around the world at myjoyonline.com. The news is brought to you by Telesol 4G, proudly Ghanaian, Telesol, just a touch. And UMB Bank, UMB Speed Up, Digibank, Let's Go. And Auto and uh, Mark Autobots Ghana, distributors of Isuzu pickups and Chevy cars. Mark Ghana with you all the long run. Coming up, Ghana Bauxite Company evades payment of penalty for overloading haulage trucks to the tune of more than $90 million. Overloading of bauxite at our so it's a ritual which has been going on for a very long time. Most of the contractors are not happy with it. We'll bring you a joint news investigation revealing startling details of how officials of the Ghana Highways Authority are complicit in this malfeasance. Also, government comes again against mounting pressure to renegotiate reviewed a merry deal. From my own observation and what I have read, I don't see this one to be fair. This agreement is terrible. We can conclude that this deal is even worse than the original contract. We we'll bring your report in here from the Institute of Energy Studies, which is calling for the entire agreement to be withdrawn. Also, Ministry of Health to meet doctors to avert planned strike in seven days. Effective Monday, August 6th, 2018, all doctors working in the public sector shall withdraw outpatient services. And in sports... Well, Black Star said Deputy Skipper Andrea Yu has received the backing of former captain of the national team, Stephen Apia, to excel at his new club, Fenerbahce. And later in the bulletin, government announces introduction of its fair support duty rule by the end of the year to check and control corruption. As a government, we are embarking on policy reforms that will change port operations and make it easier to do business in the ports of Ghana. We'll bring you details. I'm Arba Kumsen. Let's settle for the details now. Joy News' investigation has uncovered how the Ghana Bauxite Company evaded the payment of penalty for overloading haulage trucks to the tune of more than $90 million over a period of six years. This was done in connivance with some officials of the Ghana Highways Authority who operate the way bridges. After a year-long investigation, Joy News' Quetinati found that the state lost $22 million last year alone. Documents obtained by Joy News reveal the Ghana Bauxite Company, GBC, which is run by Chinese corporations through Bozai Mineral Groups in Western Region, avoided paying over $8.2 million in 2012 for overloading holly tracks with bauxite. In 2013, the record showed the penalty fine was $10.3 million. 2014 was $12.9 million, while the figure for 2015 was $16.1 million. In 2016, the penalty was $20.2 million. Last year, the Ghana Bauxite Company evaded penalty charges of $22.2 million, bringing the sum total to over $90 million. A top official of the company who pleaded anonymity claimed overloading of holly trucks is normal. Overloading of bauxite at our so it's, it's a, a ritual which has been going on for a very long time. Most of the contractors are not happy with it. But because it's coming from the top, they have no choice than to comply. Because these Chinese guys, you know the way they work. If you are not in, if, if they decide for you and then you don't comply, you have to back out. So it's been going on for a very long time. The highways authority acceptable weight for holly trucks is 60 tons. Any weight beyond this limit attract charges. For example, anything beyond 8.5 tons extra attract 5,000 cities. Webbills or vehicles that convey bauxite for the company, cited by Joy News Review, trucks carry 90 tons of bauxite instead of 60 tons. Asked how the bauxite company is able to overload without being questioned, the senior staff said they have insiders who alert them when highway authorities send mobile vans to check the practice on the road. So there are indications where the haulers have been told that this time around we are going to load like six buckets. That should be the normal. So those six buckets will go. 
and for the day or the period that they are going to be around you will see maybe six seven eight or less than 10 trucks as compared to the normal operation period of let's say 80 to 100 trucks a day trust me this is a, a syndicate it's from the top Ghana Bauxite pays for them highways are into it contractor managing the axle weights are also in there so it's a, it's a syndicate which has to be unraveled some residents of Bogos who claim their roads are being destroyed by the overloading have been waging a campaign against the practice Muniru Ziblim as one of the campaigners Ghana Bauxite company are taking overload using our road. I started this investigation since September 9, 2015. That time, RCC are constructing Kappa to Iron Free Road. So when they started, after they are finished, you see that the bauxite cars are taking over. So you started requesting the invoices and then the way bill. And then you get some of the way bills. Inside of the cars will take 61 tonnes. They have been taking 91 tonnes. And then you question them. They say that's not the problem. And then you find out some of the way bills indicate that they have been taking 12 buckets, 6 buckets, which is 91 tonnage. They are using it to pass new Bogoso. But you have an hazard load. They are supposed to check that overload, but they didn't check. To verify these claims, I pitched camp near the Agonan Quanta Wayne Bridge in May last year. Between midnight and 3 a.m., I counted 87 trucks using the stretch. But only 15 passed through the weighing bridge. Those that used it were flagged to move on without being checked by the highway officials. According to highways, it is an offense not to pass through the weigh bridge station and that attracts a penalty of 273 cities. However, none of these trucks paid the amount. You get information that they have started loading 10 buckets and then 11 buckets that they will take off in the night. So the youth of the town mobilized and went to the other loop. Tell them that you are here. People are taking overload passing through our this road. You will be saying anything. When you went there, you sleep there. That day, no any boxside car passing. Kwetin Nate with that investigative report. Now, the Ministry of Health says it will soon be meeting with the leadership of the Ghana Medical Association to resolve concerns regarding reduced SNIT contributions. The concerns were contained in a communique issued by the GMA at the weekend. They are also concerned about the non-payment of conversion differences said to have been outstanding since December 2011. National President of the GMA, Dr. Frank Ankobia, outlined a roadmap they intend to take if government fails to address these demands before August 6. A one-week window is hereby offered the Ministry of Health and for that matter government to resolve all these outstanding issues. If by 18 hours GMT on August 5th, 2018, all the issues have not been completely resolved, by government, then the following set of activities will kick start. A. Effective Monday, August 6th, 2018, all doctors working in the public sector shall withdraw outpatient services. This would continue till Sunday, 19th of August, 2018. B. From Monday, August 20th, 2018, to Sunday, August 26, 2018, all emergency services shall be withdrawn. C. From Monday, August 27, 2018, all services offered by doctors in the public health facilities shall be totally withdrawn. So that's the uh, National President of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Frank Ankobia. But Public Relations Officer at the Health Ministry, Robert Kujo, tells Joy News they will soon be meeting with the doctors to avert a possible strike. That's why I'm pleading with my colleagues, my brothers, to enter stations that uh, if they are called, they should uh, come. And then also we should uh, meet at a point, I mean, come to a compromise and see how they, some of the issues raised could be addressed immediately and those cannot be addressed now could be pushed to another time when it become appropriate to handle them. So uh, this is a matter that borders on life and death and we are all involved. These are issues that has been on the table before and there's been some back and forth with the ministry. Initially Madam, they we, wanted we, to go Madam, on April and the ministry said uh, they should give time till June and here we are 
30th of July, and it doesn't look like anything has happened. Would, do you think that within uh, this short period, uh, madam, the doctors no, would have think, a change of mind? I don't think we can say anything has happened. I mean, some measures have been addressed. I told you now, one of their concerns, their postgraduate training programs are going to be called about costing, but will be borne by the government. And other measures have also been put in place to address the issues. That is, is it, the minister will not sit down for the strike action to, to happen, for lives to be lost. So I don't think this is an issue that anybody will just be laughed over it. No. Robert Kujo is public relations officer at the Health Ministry. And still on health, the Private Health Care Providers Association of Ghana is kicking against the recommendation the NHI for its members to reduce the prices of some drugs. Former president of the association, Dr. Thomas Moore, tells Joy News the revision would affect them financially as their old stocks were bought at high prices. 2016 itself, there was no review. 2017, there was no review. And then 2018, this is a even to review ours. You are reducing the cost of the drug as if we facility operators should subsidize the treatment for health insurance claims. Private health facilities, what they make from the sale of drugs, plus the tariffs, is what we use to pay salaries, to pay our utilities, and to even pay our, some of our workers for training. We thought that they were being unfair to us. Was there any consultation with regards to this particular review? We didn't have any consultation. Yes. We, 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 all that we are doing is that we told them that we will still go with the old price list because we have already started with the old price list. And so you are going with the old price list? We are going with the old price list. And you have not been consulted by the authority to stop and go not with a all. new review? Not run. at all. Okay. Not at all. So kind of defying order? No, we are not defying order. We are only telling them that if, if I have a concern that, okay, you are, uh, uh, what you are telling me to do is very difficult. And that's a former president of the Private Healthcare Providers Association of Ghana, Dr. Thomas Moore, there. Vice President Dr. Mamadou Balmia says Ghana will be introducing the first port duty rule before December. This rule, according to him, is to check corruption at the ports. Dr. Balmia also stressed that expansion works at the Tema and Takrati ports will reduce the cost of doing business and also reduce uh, waiting times at the port. He's been speaking at the 39th Council meeting of Port Management Associations of West and Central Africa in Accra. And we are expanding the two main seaports in the country, namely the ports of Takrari and Tema. The expansion of Tema port will, for instance, increase the container throughput to 3.5 million 20-foot equivalent units, TEUs per annum, as against the current 1 million TEUs. In the case of Takrari, an on-dock multi-purpose container terminal, which is currently being constructed, will handle about 1 million TEUs of containers against the current 60,000. With the expansion at the two ports, Ghana will be positioning herself to handle about 4.5 million TEUs of container traffic when the port expansion projects are completed. In addition to expanding the port space and other infrastructure, as a government, we are embarking on policy reforms that will change port operations and make it easier to do business in the port. Vice President uh, Dr. Mamadou Bamiya there. Let's get more from Joy News' Ifwa Evans Chinnery, who's at that event. Uh, Ifwa, what more has the Vice President been saying about particularly changes at the ports? Yeah, hi, Araba. Yes, so the, the conference was, uh, was on the theme best practice the management of ports, land, and estates. And it reflects the growing importance of land um, to port operations to facilitate international trade. Now, a number of speakers were at the event. Vice President Mohamed Bomia was present there. He said that uh, Ghana will soon introduce the, the, the first port duty rule. Now, this rule, he mentioned that the other countries will be present in here to avoid corruption. He also spoke about the expansion works at the Tema and Takwadi ports, I mean, the two main ports in the country. He says uh, the expansion will, will ease um, um, the congestion and uh, waiting times at the port. And he says, he also spoke about the paperless process 
And if he said that um, more goods are being cleared now within a week. I mean, so, so compared to um, the, the um, times that the people had to wait for longer periods to clear their goods, now it's, um, it's reduced. So for Evans Chinnery there. Now, a 25-year-old senior high school student has been released from prison after spending three years on remand on suspicion of stealing a mobile phone. Eric Menu, a student of Dwayo Nkwanta Senior High School in the Ashanti region, has denied the allegation. He was discharged on Friday after his case was heard by judges on the Justice for All program. Lava Femme's Nanaya Ojima caught up with him immediately after his release from prison and has filed this report. Peter was discharged alongside five other inmates from the Kumasi prisons by the Justice for All program. Spotting a white shirt over a pair of black trousers, his demeanor suddenly changes. He can hardly afford a smile as the thought of where to go next dawns on him. I have been here for the past three years, but I am free to go home today. I couldn't complete senior high school due to my incarceration. One of my teachers visited me. She was shocked over my situation. I am late in all spheres of life. I have to start all over again. I have no idea how I'm going to make it. Going back to school would be difficult since there is no one to pay my fees. I pray I get someone to assist me learn a trade. Peter lost his father some years ago. His aging mother was unable to support his senior high school education. He joined friends in Mansu area to work at a mining site in a bid to find money to pay his registration fees. Little did he know his attempt to find the owner of a mobile phone he picked on the ground could land him in jail. We used to work in the bush. We came to town one day to buy food. I saw this phone on the ground whilst we were on our way back to the site. I learned a suspected thief was burned to ashes a day before. He's believed to be a part of a gang terrorizing residence. As a good Samaritan, I called a contact on the phone to help locate owner of the found phone. The woman at the other end asked for my location and other details. She came to my place the next day with police to arrest me. I told them I was innocent, but they wouldn't listen. Executive Director of POS Foundation, an NGO involved in the Justice for All program, Jonathan Osewusu says most of the individuals discharged or granted bail by the program face similar challenges. He says his outfit will need support to help Peter and others in similar need. In few occasions, we will find the family taking care of them and others, we trace them to their families and as a result of stigmatization, they've left the family and gone somewhere that they cannot even be found. In a woman at uh, the northern side, for example, we went there and they said, they, after returning from prison, things has not been so well. So she left the family. Reporting for Joy News, Nanea Ochima, Kumasi. And here in Accra, I'm Arba Kumsing. You're listening to the Midday News on Joy 99.7 FM. Stories gone by, Ghana Bauxite Company evades payment of penalty for overloading haulage trucks to the tune of more than $90 million dollars. Government later in the bulletin, government comes against the mounting pressure to renegotiate reviewed a Mary deal. From my own observation and what I have read, I don't see this one to be better. This agreement is terrible. We can conclude that this deal is even worse than the original contract. Also later in the bulletin, acting vice chancellor of the University of Education, Winneba, is asking policymakers on education to ground their policy directions on research. We have details after this break. That is the sweet sound of excellence. That is the sound from Mac. Yes, Mac Ghana is the number one distributor of the world's best quality Isuzu and Chevrolet vehicles in Ghana. Isuzu tracks from 1.5 tons to heavy duty vehicles. Isuzu buses from 15 to 33 seaters, double and single cabin pickup, available in automatic and manual transmissions. We also stock a wide range of Chevy cars from SUVs, sedans, and small cars, fully loaded with exquisite specifications. All our range of 
vehicle stand out due to its high fuel efficiency, safety, luxury, spacious interior, world class delivery, and after sales servicing. What's more, we offer flexible payment terms to meet your pocket. Mark Ghana is a sole distributor for Isuzu trucks and pickups, as well as all range of Chevrolet cars in Ghana. Call us on 0302-813-919 in Accra or 0242-039-550 in Kumasi. Visit our website at markghana.com. Mark Ghana, with you for the long run. Welcome back to the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. It's time for sports. Benedict Tozu is in the studio and there's more news about Andrea Yu's move to Fenerbahce, Yes, right? exactly. And Andrea says uh, he is ready for the challenge ahead after sealing that move to Fenerbahce on Friday. And then he trained uh, with his new teammates uh, for the first time on Saturday. And for him, the vision of the club is in line with his ambitions. Hence, he's ready to give his all to the club. Fenerbahce is a very, very big club. A club who, who has a new project. Um, new sporting director, new chairman. So um, the club wants to, to, to get to the other level and um, this project was something which touched me and I believe in. So when we, we started discussing and we started moving, I, I, I felt that the project was very serious. So that's Andrea Ayu, and his first act of the season will be to help negotiate a tricky Champions League playoff route, uh, which will see his side, that's uh, Fenerbahce, take on three-time European Cup winners Benfica to win a place in the group stage. Now, one man who knows the Turkish terrain and played with Fenerbahce is Steven Apia. Well, the former Blasters captain believes Andre has what it takes to succeed at his former club. Uh, I can see that he's, he's already in the mood. Uh, I mean... At times, it doesn't matter where, where you find yourself. It's all about what, what um, you have to take your work uh, seriously. And I mean, we have spoken a lot, and I know that he's going to deliver because, as I said, um, he's a hardworking guy who always wanted to win. So uh, we have spoken a lot, and I think that he, he has take, um, taken that uh, 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 just little advice that I've given him. So former Black Stars captain Stephen Pia, he also played at Fenerbahce during his playing days. So uh, but when you join us at 1, there is more sports. But the Black Princess, that's the Ghana under-20 female team, will depart Ghana for France uh, uh, for this year's uh, FIFA under-20 Women's World Cup tonight. And the Princesses will open the tournament with the host France on Sunday, that's August 5. And we are in Group A with uh, France, that's the host nation, New Zealand, and then the Netherlands. All right. Many thanks, uh, Benedict Ousu with that update in sports. Now, the acting vice chancellor of the University of Education, Winneba, is asking policymakers on education to ground their policy directions on research. Reverend Professor Anthony Afoboni has been speaking at the Grassack International Conference at the University of Education, Winneba, currently underway. And uh, correspondent Richard Kujinyaku joins us on the line uh, with more on this. Richard, so... Uh, what is that exactly is the vice chancellor saying that uh, these educational policies are rushed through without proper consultations? Uh, he says that uh, the, those in academia are constantly being hit with new policies, not know anything about. Meanwhile, they are the research institutions that are supposed to carry out uh, researches that are on education. He cited uh, the multi or uh, the double track system that has just been introduced. And he says that they didn't even know about it. He, being a professor, didn't even know about it. And he's seen in the public domain and people are talking about it. He says that researchers have also been conducted on a three- and four-year uh, senior high school system. That has not been exhausted, but it's been abandoned. And so uh, they are tired of uh, being there and then uh, policies will be, uh, will be slapped on them. So that is essentially what he's saying. He wants uh, policymakers to marry yeah, policy without a research. All right, many thanks for that update, Richard Kujo Nyako. Now, there is mounting pressure on government to withdraw the reviewed Ameri deal to ensure Ghana makes maximum returns from it. The opposition NDC in a parliament, as well as civil society organizations, have kicked against the new agreement, insisting it will not offer Ghana value for money. Parliament could not approve the deal over the weekend before going on break after the Energy Committee suspended consideration of the deal following the concerns. As the Attorney General's Office prepares to examine the reviewed agreement, the Institute of Energy Studies is demanding the Energy Ministry withdraws the report. Uh, the agreement will hear from them, but first, here's a news desk report. Earlier this month, 
government laid before parliament the fresh agreement to amend the controversial $510 million Ameri power deal that was approved by the House in 2015. The Mahama administration signed the deal at the height of the energy crisis. After the MPP took over power, a committee established by Energy Minister Boache Jako concluded the sole sourced deal had been overpriced by $150 million. Government claims it will make savings of 405 million US dollars on the new deal. But minority spokesperson on energy, Adams Mutawakilu, disputes this. They have renegotiated, they have brought it to us in a form of novation agreement. And as ranking, it's my interest to ensure that the good people of Ghana benefit. Their claim was backed by energy policy think tank Africa Center for Energy Policy. Ben Boache is executive director. We can conclude that this deal is even worse than the original contract. We are committing a cash flow of $1.2 billion to this new agreement. And it doesn't really make sense for anybody to do that. You know, so I think Parliament would do us a great deal if they can reject this for a proper renegotiation to be done. Only this week, staff of the Volta River Authority echoed concerns raised by the minority and civil society groups. The workers want government to go back to the negotiation table. Well, the Energy Committee has suspended consideration of the deal following the concerns. Majority Leader Oseche Minsabunsu says the Attorney General's office is preparing to re-examine the reviewed agreement. Some are even saying that we may even end up spending more. We need to interrogate the figures to know that what we are doing, what decision that we are taking is in the best interest of the country, which explains why. And I spoke to the finance minister, I spoke to the attorney general, and we all decided, plus the minister responsible for energy, and we decided to tarry a while, have a closer look at it, I guess, when we come back. Majority Leader Oseche Mensa Bonsu ending that news desk report. While the Institute of Energy Studies is demanding government withdraws the agreement, its executive director in a statement, uh, Pakwe C. Anamwasechi, says government has called the novation and amendment agreement a renegotiated deal because it has adjusted contract price and established a new financial equilibrium to reflect the extension of the term for the provision of the services under the Ameri Performance Obligation. IES, however, sees no renegotiation in the entire proposed agreement and in uh, the Ameri deal. And he says, if at all, the Ministry of Energy did a poor job. He says, it's our considered opinion that the proposed agreement is an insult to value for money, unreasonable and an extended ripoff that must not be passed by Parliament in its current form. And as you heard, Parliament uh, froze consideration on the agreement. They will uh, consider it when it resumes. Now, government last week announced the increment of the daily minimum wage by 10% to stand at 10 CD 65 pesos. But there are many Ghanaians who would still earn below that threshold because they're not affected much by government policies meant to protect the ordinary Ghanaian. In the following report, we look at the thousands caught up in this situation through the eyes of Vida Edu, a mother of two who earns 10 Ghana CDs daily. Here's Nancy Emefa Dradosi's report. On the busy streets of Accra, I meet 35-year-old Vida carrying a plastic bowl with sachet water in it. Vida is a mother of two and married to a wayside baba. She and her husband left their children in the village to find a better life here in Accra. <laughs> I used to sell fried fish back in the village, but I took a loan and I ran into losses, so I had to come to Accra and make a living. It's not easy surviving here. Tema Station, Vida works here, hawking sachet water to the thousands who come here every day. She makes just 10 Ghana cities, enough to buy Vida and her husband dinner of kinky and small pieces of fish. I sometimes take five bags of sachet water a day and I often get 10 cities, but unfortunately, I spend eight cities on transportation. The remaining two cities are buy water and food. 
Nancy MFA Dradosi's report there. Now let's turn to Mapitso Sibidi, uh, who's been checking what's trending on social media. So what's trending? Well, hashtag Monday Motivation is trending. Uh, let's see what some people have been saying about it. Uh, Jacqueline underscore gold says, tell me I can't, then watch me work twice as hard to prove I can. Hashtag Monday Motivation. And this one is from at J from T-Mobile who says, the only thing standing between you and your goal is the excuse you keep telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it. But it's okay. You can start tomorrow while the rest of us crush it today. Hashtag Monday Motivation. <laughs> A lot of people motivate. There. Many thanks to uh, Mapizzo Sibida there with what's trending on social media. And that's how we wrap up the midday news. Our top story, Ghana Bauxite Company evades payment of penalty for overloading haulage trucks to the tune of more than $90 million. We brought you a joint news investigative report revealing startling details of how officials of the Ghana Highways Authority are complicit in this malfeasance. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. I'm Arba Kumsen. Good